Now, if you're looking for a local gift for maybe a reader or a history buff on your list, how about delving into the little-known gritty history of our city's West End? Well, Vancouver author Aaron Chapman's latest book is called Vancouver Vice. Aaron, hello there. Great to be with you, Gloria. Well, great to see you too. And I've got a copy of your book right here. And this is interesting. As you look into our city's history, why did you want to focus on the West End this time? Well, I think, I, I, you know, I did a book called The Last Gang in Town a couple of years back that dealt with sort of East Vancouver. And I thought, let's move up. It was somewhat interesting to, to view a neighborhood through the lens of some of its crime history, I thought. And I thought uh, onto that afterwards, it would be interesting to maybe tackle the West End. And a period of the West End that most Vancouverites may have sort of largely put so far in the past uh, that they may have completely forgotten about it. Um, if you've been living in Vancouver for the last 20, 30 years or something, you may not have any knowledge of it at all. Or if you lived through those times then, throughout the 70s and early 80s, uh, it was a different time in the West End altogether. So it's, it's funny how if you walk through the West End today, there's no hint of some of the turbulence of those years. So I thought it might be now might be an interesting time to view that um, through, the, through the lens of, of, of what I do. Okay, you've piqued our interest with the talk of turbulence in the West End. What is it that, that a lot of people you think don't know about West End's history? <clears throat> well, you know, of, of course, the, the the West End today is a, is a very different place. As you say, if, as I say, if you walk through it today, there's it doesn't really give a hint towards its past. Um, more so, maybe than other areas of the city in that regard. I thought um, in the seventies and early eighties, there was a, a, a boon of a, of a street prostitution problem. Um, that was happening in the West End. And it really sort of put the neighborhood in a bit of a civil war with each other as some people, neighbors sort of faced off against some of the sex workers. And that's the, what we remember mostly of those years. But there is also what seems to be sort of forgotten in the mix of that. There was a whole crime wave that sort of happened in uh, the West End at those times. In 1982, there were more murders in the West End than there were in the downtown east side. There was also uh, the police at the time uh, were dealing with drugs and gambling and all these other things that was sort of happened that was all happening in the West End then. So it's an interesting it's interesting to look back through through those years and see, you know, how how it's how the neighborhood has changed. But also to interview and, and, and hear some of the stories of the people that worked on all sides of things, be it the sex workers, some of the vice squad police, uh, and and hear sort of for the first time some stories and reveal a West End that we maybe didn't know so much about before. Yeah, okay. So beyond the, you know, the sex, wor sex workers memorial that, that remains in the West End, any other remnants or, or something that could tell us that, that things have actually changed there? Well, the interesting thing is there are certainly things left over from, the, from those days. The, the street barricades, everybody knows driving down the West End can be a little bit of a weird experience, depending on where you want to go or some of the left-hand turns you can't do or anything like this. And that's because in 40 years ago, just this past month, in November of 1981, the, a number of street barricades were put in. Now, they were pretty rudimentary, sort of wooden barricades just locked into place uh, back then. At the time, neighbors complained that uh, their access to their streets were cut off, and even the fire department said it's going to be difficult for us to get to a fire in some cases. Uh, ostensibly, they were, as they, the city announced, they were being put in to curb the street prostitution problem that was happening. But in reality, it had been decided a few years before that they were going to be putting in a, a street calming measures. But they're left over today that if you were to say, well, you know, we don't have the street prostitution uh, issue anymore in the West End. We should remove these. There'd probably be a hue and cry uh, because uh, to, to leave them because neighbors have gotten used to them now. And now they've turned into little parklets and little, uh, there's sort of curbs that allow, you know, bicycle riders and pedestrians to get through. But yeah. the real reason there is, or ostensibly the city, what the city called said the real reason they were there goes back 40 years ago. Well, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And it can be frustrating if you're on the wrong street trying to get somewhere across yeah. across the West End sometimes because there's one-way streets and turnarounds and all, all that kind of thing. Now, now you mentioned some high-profile murders in the area. Can you give us a, a, a little bit of a, a little some details about one of them? Well, the, one of the most interesting things is um, in May of 1984, there was a, um, the book starts off with a, a, a story about how police respond to a body that was found in the trunk of a car was left in Stanley Park. No, nothing more Vancouver than that. So it was, it's a, it's a murder in Lost Lagoon, as, as the chapter goes. And, <clears throat> but what the police begin to investigate and who that person was, and it's sort of, I don't want to give that away because it's a little bit of a spoiler, I suppose, uh, connects to a whole world of, of, uh, of an underground uh, prostitution network um, that involves what police sort of later believe some felt fairly well-known people in the city at the time. Um, scandalous uh, in its own way, but there wasn't just that. There, some of the other, um, there was some really, um, there were some really high-profile murders of just everyday pedestrians or everyday people in the in the in the in the West End. It also gave great concern that, that uh, 
when people started to question about that the, had police lost control of the neighborhood or what was the safety, uh, urban safety at, or at night, uh, some of the same questions, interestingly, we were talking about today uh, in terms of a lot of people are fearing in Vancouver these days about going out at night or going out alone at night, where we were asking these same questions in uh, the West End, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? How, how would you say the the overall character of the West End has changed? Well, in many ways, the, it, it, as much as the neighborhoods changed from those years, there's something about it. If you walk through the West End, many much much of it hasn't. If you walk up and down Davy Street, some of the well, some of the businesses have changed along the you know the storefronts and whatnot. But those stores are still exist. The buildings are still there, the same dimensions of those buildings. So it hasn't changed in many ways. Davy Street hasn't changed in that much. But the book also sort of documents how the rise of the gayborhood, quote unquote, has happened as well. That uh, at the time, 40 years ago, there was a lot more controversy. There weren't rainbow sidewalks or, or intersections that, uh, back then. We've come a long way from those years in that regard, too. So it, it's interesting how some things have changed and some things haven't changed at all. You know, Aaron, it's obvious that you love this city and, and, uh, and it's complicated history as well. So what keeps you writing these history books? I think, you know, I'm born and raised in Vancouver, and I, that probably helps because my memories of the city go back to when I was a kid. And even though when some of these stories happened in the West End, I was a, I was a rather young lad in town. I remember at the time the controversy about it, the, 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 the evening news stories that were constantly about it at that time. And when I was talking to people, when I was doing research for the book and talking to people what I was working on, a lot of people had no idea. Uh, 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 more recent people who had, had moved to Vancouver or immigrated to Vancouver. So I thought there's something kind of lost here that would be interesting to investigate because in many ways, even though this was a time that was a, uh, a turbulent time and, and, and when West Van had its, or West, uh, the West End had its own underbelly, uh, if you will, um, these things sort of make up the DNA of the city in a, in a regard. And that's sort of how we got here. Um, and I keep doing it because I, there's so many more fascinating stories about Vancouver that are yet to explore. I always think of maybe writing another book or maybe doing a novel or something, or, but I keep going back to the, the history of the city because it's so fascinating to me. Well, thank you very much for keeping it all alive for us here. Crime and spectacle in the city's West End. Great to touch base with you, Aaron. Thank you, Gloria.